Good afternoon. I want to talk today about an exciting new technology uh, that I think is going to change the way uh, we're going to be doing things in the very near future. And it's a new technique uh, involving cerclage. So we all know that managing proximal fractures is complex business. If we look at the incidence of humeral fractures in revision arthroplasty, it's as high as 41% in some studies. In our own study that we published, it was 16%. And even in native arthroplasty, we have fracture rates as high as 3% underlying the osteoporosis issues that we deal with. We certainly have answers now for simple fractures in good bone quality. And this talk is not about that. But this talk is for problems like this, where we do not have solutions for these issues, particularly when we're looking at more comminution and tuberosity migration. These are three patients of mine, all under the age of 50, with these fractures. How are we going to manage these patients if we're going to try to avoid arthroplasty in them? Or if we are going to engage in arthroplasty, how are we going to ensure that our tuberosities stay united? This is not what you want to achieve. This is a patient that was referred in to me. You can see that traditional cerclage technique with a stainless steel wire. The shoulder is dislocated. The tuberosities are malunited. And uh, Boileau and others and other thought leaders have shown the importance of tuberosity position. So we can't leave the patients like this because there is really no bailout in that circumstance. We do owe a debt of gratitude to Mark Frankel uh, for his near paper showing the importance of cerclage uh, constructs. And we also know from our work and others that the 135 degree construct for arthroplasty, particularly in reverse, is a marked advantage over 155 degrees. And we showed this by showing there was 20% less strain on the cuff at 135 versus 155. But despite the fact that we know we need to have meticulous suture technique, there's a technology deficiency here. And this is shown by this article. Here's an article written out of Europe looking at tuberosity failure. And what's interesting, the graph on the right here will show you a 40% union rate with suture technique and a 75% failure rate with cable technique. So we see that the sutures, even though we have the right biomechanical construct, there's a technology uh, gap here. What about using stainless steel wires? We do know that they fracture. Up to a third of cases in greater trochanteric osteotomies are fractured, uh, the wires fracture. And even in long bone fractures, up to about 10% of the wires fracture. So I was trying to understand why this is the case and why we have such failures with this. And I learned a lot about cerclage methods. And when we pull on a suture, or pull on a wire rather, you can see one of two things happen. Those two top slides show one where you're pulling on the wire and one where you're not. You can see how on the top left, the, the wires overlap. That's a very weak construct. What was really interesting to me are these three pictures on the bottom. We're not supposed to cut the wires at the, uh, in the middle of the uh, wrap. We're actually supposed to cut them proximal to that. And this study actually showed that if you cut, like I think I was always doing on the picture on the left, on the bottom left, you can lose up to 44% of your compression strength just by doing that. And why is that the case? It's also the case when we lay the suture down, or the wire down, rather, you actually are un you're unwinding your construct. So simply by taking your wire and tapping it down to bone perpendicular to your, your cerclage, you can actually decrease your construct strength by 47%. If you lie it down towards the wrap, you decrease your construct strength by 50%. But amazingly, if you flip it the other way around, as evidenced in that picture C, you actually will decrease your construct strength by 90%, only have 10% residual strength remaining. Because most of the tension occurs at the last twist, and by lying the sutures down, we're untwisting the construct. What about fatigue failures and cyclic load? Well, we see that 50% of the wires actually break at just 20,000 cycles. What about using cables? Well, here's a case report of a patient of mine who was uh, 72 years old uh, when I did an arthroplasty on him in 2011. In 2016, he was struck as a pedestrian struck. These are his index films in 2010. Standard A1 glenoid. Here's his arthroplasty construct with a cemented stem. And this is him after he was struck by a car. He sustained an ipsilateral left plateau fracture. So we put a plate uh, with cerclage wires around this, getting distal fixation. Here is his image immediately after surgery, the day after surgery, and here he is within two weeks. And he was not really bearing weight, but he was moving around in bed, and we can see within several weeks, we can see the cerclage having actually fractured, and we can see him forming a large uh, osseous response. 
And ultimately, interestingly, he went on to Union. But he sees this wire and he swears to me this is causing all of his pain and actually we're scheduled to take that out. Our goal is to achieve this. This is a patient that had a displaced proximus fracture. I used a fiber tape cerclage technique. You can see just a little remnant of the indentation there. There's no uh, wire, there's no uh, metal to see. We have a, and we've had excellent incorporation. I'm gonna show a little case example because this is really the next generation of how we're gonna be doing cerclage technique. Um, we can see here with the wires that were put in in a case, you can see the migration of the wires, and we all have heard migration of wires even into the interpleural cavity. And three cases here where we used the cerclage technique using fiber tape and showing union and a pretty much anatomic reconstruction of all three of these cases with the tuberosities healing with the fiber tape cerclage. What's the data show? When I looked at this data, it first came out to us, and they shared, uh, Andy uh, Petrie shared it with me, I actually thought this data was wrong because the stainless steel numbers here at 1,880 newtons for maximum load are the highest that I've seen actually in any of the literature. So even though we, can, we have a testing, it shows that the stainless steel is actually surpassing what is in the current literature, the fiber tape shows 2.4 times higher maximum load and 2.3 times less displacement with cyclic loading than an 18 gauge and a 16 gauge wire. So here's a quick case of a 57 year old female who had an, uh, a motor vehicle accident 11 years earlier. She had an intermedullary device that we just heard about that was placed. She came to see one of the trauma colleagues at my hospital and he thought that he could make her better by taking out her nail. He took out her nail and then he referred her to see us. And you can see she has advanced arthritis. Furthermore, her cuff is deficient. Um, as evidenced by uh, the ins insertion point, we planned her through VIP like we always do. We realized we needed to use a graft because she had some bone uh, loss on her glenoid. And our plan was to do a prophylactic cerclage uh, as we were, re as we were uh, instrumenting her canal. Okay, so um, this is, as I said, a 57-year-old female. She had very poor active motion. She was only able to actively forward flex uh, to 80 degrees. Um, we actually were planning on doing an arthritis reverse with her with a bone graft, and we used uh, a fiber tape cerclage. When we were instrumenting her canal, you could see that she had a crack in her calcar, and you could see the quality of her bone. So what we did was we passed a double fiber tape cerclage, and we used a bone passer to do this, and the, uh, the set that is coming out has all of these instruments uh, in them, so you can do this with a, sing a simple kit. We will pre-tension the suture a little bit so that we actually have no slack in it, and we're gonna pass the suture around twice around the canal. What's nice about the fiber tape in this, in this application is that it has a lot of friction compared to wire, and it tends to stay at a higher position than the wire does. So we'll take the slack out of the construct, and then I'll attach it to our tensioner. And I'll tension to about 40 or 45 pounds, and I'll impact with the tensioner in place. And this allows me to kind of uh, regulate exactly how much tension and how much displacement I wanna have on this. Um, because the amount of tension you have can go up to 80 pounds, uh, which is a dramatic amount of tension. There's no way you can actually tension that anywhere close to even more than 20 pounds by hand. So we've tensioned it, and we still have a small gap, but we can see there's complete lack of propagation of that split below this. There's our final appearance, and it looks like we've actually closed that gap down somewhat. So in conclusion, what we have now is an exciting new application of an existing technology to actually solve a problem that's existed at least since the 1780s. When you look at problems when patients who have these fractures or have periprosthetic fractures or fractures of any type, it's important to have meticulous suture technique and pre-op planning. I think the fiber tape cerclage adds tremendously to our armamentarium, what we can offer our patients. And finally, it's a technology and a technique for this century. Thank you.